For most farmers, rain is crucial to ensuring healthy crop growth and a bountiful harvest. But here in Dorchester County, farmer Kevin McLaren prefers a dry spell to a downpour. I've always joked that I love a good drought. And that's because his crops, oysters grown in floating cages, don't need any more water than they have already. But they do need salt. This is the Chop Tank Oyster Company on the Chop Tank River. So we're the oldest oyster farm in Maryland. We applied for a four acre lease 20 years ago and we've been farming oysters on that lease since then. Over two decades, Kevin has dealt with just about everything that Mother Nature could throw at him, from extreme temperatures. Ice in the wintertime, freezing everything up. Sometimes in the summertime, it's so hot that the animals are coming out of 85 degree temperature water. To heavy winds. We start to lose floats. We've had hurricanes come through where we've picked up 300 floats off the other side of the river. To rain. Lots and lots of rain. On that front, the past year has been one for the books. 2018 weather started out just fine. And then the floodgates opened up in May and it just started dumping water. Fresh water pouring into the bay and causing salinity levels to plummet. Bad news for these salt-loving mollusks. Oysters, whether farmed or wild, require salinity between 5 and 35 parts per thousand in order to survive. Kevin's Bayside oyster farm is less salty than its ocean counterparts, but still well within the comfort zone, usually around 15 or 16 parts per thousand. Normally when things are great, salt's up, they're eating, growing, reproducing. But in 2018? It was down to you know, five or six parts per thousand at some point during the summer. As the salt level goes down, they have to focus more energy on just surviving rather than growing and reproducing. Today, Kevin's cages hold about five million oysters, ranging in age from one to five years. He harvests by size rather than age. And last year's rain means that fewer in each age group have put on enough growth to go to market. Right now, his team is packing up precocious two-year-olds. These are our top 10%. So these oysters should be a little bit bigger, but they're still the bigger of the oysters that we, that we generally have. And we're counting them up. We're getting ready to send them out to a restaurant. The hardest hit by last year's low salinity were Kevin's seed oysters, AKA the babies. Typically these animals at this age, they should be at least an inch. These guys are coming closer to about a quarter of an inch. But slowed growth isn't the only rain related challenge that oyster farmers face. Adult oysters don't want to spawn when it gets too fresh. For the bay, fewer oysters spawning or reproducing means fewer oysters, period. And that spells trouble for water quality, since these filter feeders help keep things clean. For Kevin, who relies on locally spawned larvae to stock his farm each year, lack of availability meant spending 10 times more than usual on seed oysters from Florida instead. And as for the farm's market-ready oysters, Salinity has a huge impact on how they taste. Just ask employee Bubba Parker. Bubba can tell you what the salinity of the river is based on when he eats an oyster. Salinity's around seven, like a little higher than that, but it was delicious. According to Kevin, this change in flavor could potentially impact sales. But while rainy days may slow things down a little here at the Chop Tank Oyster Company, they won't stop Kevin from doing what he loves. The weather challenges are just that, they're challenges. You have the days that are beautiful and then you have the days that are not so beautiful. So you really gotta take the good with the bad. And if you wait long enough, there's always something different.